Now, NCAA 2006 is probably the greatest NCAA football game ever. Why? Because you can play with FCS teams, a.k.a. 1AA teams. Now, on your screen, you have the Alabama State Hornets of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, a.k.a. the SWAC. This is a football program that has been losing and struggling for a very long time. As a matter of fact, they haven't won the SWAC championship since 2004. I remember that game. It was against Southern. I was in Birmingham with my pops, my brother, and we was freezing our ass off watching that game. One of the greatest games I've ever been to. Alabama State won that game. And they haven't won a SWAT title since. Now as we get ready to start this new series. I just want to say thank you to all of you that have been watching all my videos up to this point. But now it's time for the HBCU takeover. It's the SWAC. It's the MEAC. Let's get it. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to turn the Mac into the SWAC. So the MAC has 12 teams, right? And on this game, the SWAC only has 10. Now, in case you're not up with current events, Bethune Cookman and Florida AM will be joining the SWAC come 2021 in the fall. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to go and add Bethune Cookman and we're going to add Florida AM. And that will be. The Mac, a.k.a. The Swack. Since those two rhyme. I'm pretty sure you get got that already. And then we have the Miak. We're going to turn the Sun Belt into the Miak. So there's just one exception. So Tennessee State, as you all, for those that don't know, Tennessee State is also an HBCU. But they're not in the HBCU conference. They are in the Ohio Valley Conference with teams like Tennessee, Chattanooga, and Jacksonville State. So the Sun Belt looks like this. Tennessee State, Delaware State, Hampton, Howard, Morgan State, North Carolina A&T, Norfolk State, and South Carolina State. And there you have the new SMAC, a.k.a. the SWAC. And there you have Bethune and Florida A&M. There we go. Now, the man leading the Alabama State Hornets. His name is Joseph Cooley. Joe Cool. This man has no reputation. This is his first time ever being a head coach. And he's leading a program that has no prestige, no academics, nothing. We're starting from the bottom. So now you see the divisions in the MAC East and the MAC West. Or SWAC East and SWAC West. Now in real life, Rivals Alabama State and Alabama A&M are in the same division. I was not able to do that while putting the teams together. But I'm okay with that. Now look at the Sun Belt though. You have Tennessee State being the favorite to win this conference. Delaware State is dead last. Yikes. Now here is what we add up compared to the rest of the country. All the HBCU schools are at the bottom of the barrel. And I'm going to be looking to build Alabama State into a powerhouse. So here's our schedule. We go to Iowa, Alcorn State. We go to Auburn. Then we go to Howard and D.C., Tallahassee with the Rattlers, Bethune Cookman, Texas Southern, Southern, Alabama A&M, the Magic City Classic, which will be in Montgomery, we go to Jackson State, and then we finish the season against Grambling. Now let's take a look at the roster. Starting at the quarterback spot. This man, that 2004 SWAT championship game, he was voted the MVP. 
He was also drafted in the second round, 64 overall to the Minnesota Vikings, and he backed up Russell Wilson when they made their Super Bowl run in Seattle. His name is Tavares Jackson. Now, for those of you that don't know, Tavares Jackson didn't start his collegiate career at Alabama State. It started in Arkansas. Things wasn't going well up there, so eventually he transferred to Alabama State, and he made a name for himself and brought that program back to prosperity. He brought them a SWAT championship with his play as well as his legs. The man has a cannon. He was drafted in the second round for a reason. I still remember the game in high school when he was at Lanier and they played Jeff Davis back in 2000. And he threw the game-winning touchdown pass, I believe it was to Clayton Harris. That won him that game. That broke Jeff Davis's heart. The man has made an impact everywhere he has went. Eventually, he got to the NFL, so that is a high achievement. The man is a gunk town legend, no doubt about that. Now, as we look at the running back spots, Keldrick Williams will be the only running back we will rely on. No other running back will be getting a carry unless we're blowing a team out. Now, Keldrick and Tavares were not only teammates in college. They were teammates in high school. They both went to Seattle Lanier. Also, like Tavares, Keldrick's collegiate career began in the SEC. He committed to Tennessee. I remember that day because Tennessee also had commits from Cedric Houston and Jabari Davis. Eventually, Keldrick transferred to Alabama State, made a name for himself. He made a big impact during Alabama State's last SWAC championship run. He was very big for the Hornets that season. Now for the wide receiver position. Al Vance Robinson is the impact player at this position. And we're going to be depending on him a lot. Now I've been playing this game for a couple of days now. Trying to get used to the controls and stuff like that. And these receivers, they drop a lot of passes. It doesn't make any sense how many passes these receivers drop. And that's including Robinson. But we're going to be including him in a lot of packages. We're going to be moving him around. I want to put him in slot positions and stuff like that. But he, as you can see here, he has the ability to break through. Break through the line of scrimmage. I don't know how he's going to look against better competition. But we're going to be depending on him a lot. Now here's the rest of the offense. Look at the tight end position. We have two seniors. And they're 40 overall. They have no speed, they can't catch. They have no strength, they can't block, they have no awareness. Now look at the offensive line, starting with the tackle positions. Nobody on this offensive line is good. They can't block, they have no strength. There's no point of even me scrolling down showing you the rest of the ratings because they're just absolute <laughs> Now the guard position. Again, nobody, nobody can block. Everybody's just a replica of each other. And then look at the center position. Two sophomores. We're going to have a hard time running up the gut in this game because they can't block. Now on the defensive side, we're going to start on the cornerback position. Now on defense, we only have one good player. Literally. And that doesn't say much at all. But this right here is Neil Bryant. He's a red shirt senior. And we're looking for him to be our two-way all-around player. That's right. We want him to be like Charles Woodson at Michigan. We want him to be like a Dory Jackson at USC. We want him to be like Chet Bailey at Georgia. He's going to be returning kicks as well as punts. He will be playing offense, wide receiver, and running back. He's going to be doing everything for us. Now the rest of the defense looks like this. We have no speed. We have nobody that can get a good jump off the ball. We have nobody with strength. We have nobody with awareness. We have nobody that's intimidating. We have absolutely nothing on defense. And I can see us giving up at least 40 to 50 points per game. 
I, I'm just going to put it out there. This season is going to be horrendous on defense. So we're going to be looking to looking to go through the first season and see if we can get some attract some defensive players, some decent players. Now another thing about this series is it's going to be hard to recruit because uh, the majority of our games are not going to be on TV. No TV, no exposure to recruits, and that just makes things even harder. But join us next time as we take on the Iowa Hawkeyes in Kinnick Stadium. Thank you for watching. Peace.